just introducing, we're just introducing, ladies and gentlemen, what God says we need to do here in America. We need to do this in America. We're live on Facebook today, and we greet our Facebook audience and we thank God for you. We thank God for Facebook. We thank God uh, for giving us more uh, ears to, to preach to. More people are listening. More people are tuning into this ministry. We are not trying to build up a mega ministry. We just want to get the word of God out to people while there is still time. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Leroy Carter wants to preach the gospel while there is yet time. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want my children to perish. I don't want your children to perish. I don't want your grandchildren or great-grandchildren to perish. I love this nation. I love the nations of the world. I've met people all over the world. And, and if we if we succumb to the bitterness and the hatred and the divisive spirits that Satan has unloosed against the church, then we'll be no good to anybody. So we just we just want to uh, um, do a little bit of tightening up. We need to tighten up. We're going to do the Archie Bell and the Drells thing. We want to tighten up. We need to tighten up. We need to gird up our loins with truth. Amen. And if you're not saved, ladies and gentlemen, you need to get saved wherever you're watching this program from. If you're in, a, in, in Kenya, if you're in uh, Africa, Europe, Asia, North, South America, wherever you are, if you are not saved, you need to get saved because time is winding up. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't have time for fighting and for arguing and for uh, arguing doctrine and being bitter and finger pointing and, 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 and blaming ministries and calling this ministry unchristian and calling that person unchristian. You just don't know. Uh, let God be the judge. Let us love one another. The Lord said they shall know we're Christians by our love. And some of you need to just get off Facebook. Some of you need to get off the social media. Some of you need to just get out of the chat room. Some of you just need to get off the cell phone. And there's a time when all of us, we need to just shut up. Just shut up. Uh, Linda Barrett, I said we need to just shut up and just be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am the Lord. The Bible warns us, do not let any corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Don't let any corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this, we learned this a long time ago. Mama told us years ago, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. And well, mom, I'm grown now. I'm 18 years old. I'm 50 years old. I can say anything I want. No, you can't. Well, I'm the one paying this uh, smartphone bill. I'm the one paying this internet bill. I'm the one who's got, this is my, my Facebook page. I had a woman told me one day, Pastor Carter, don't, don't interfere with my, uh, uh, my life. This is my page. This is my Facebook page. Now, when I remember her, her, I would lay, listen, ladies and gentlemen, when I remember this lady laying down with pit bulls and the drug dealers having her using her to to lay down with pit bulls and have a sex with pit bulls so that she could get the cocaine when she was strung out on drugs. And, and we helped pray her into salvation and deliverance. And now uh, she's got her own Facebook page and nobody can tell her anything. And she's saved. She's uh, quote, save, unquote, and nobody can tell her anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're riding on that high horse of pride, you better take heed because God will pull you down. Don't you forget where you came from, and don't forget the people God used to bring you to where you are. Just because you're, you've are you got an income now, you got a nice house, got a nice home, three or four cars, a good bank account, and no longer on food stamps, no longer out there selling your body on the streets, no longer pimping. Uh, uh, don't think you're better than anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling the church to repentance, calling the church to repentance. So today we're going to look at uh, the subject, let us rise up and build part two. Let us pray. 
Father God, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus. We give thanks to you. We welcome uh, all those who are on the, the Back to Basics online church, God, where people from all walks of life who cannot go to church or don't go to church have an access to you through this medium. Lord God, forgive us of all of our sins. Cleanse us of all iniquity. Touch the hearts of the people. Let them know that you love them. Oh God, if there are people today who are looking to be saved, we ask that you will save them, Lord, by your mighty power. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. We ask that you revolutionize the lives of people. Forgive us of our sins. We have sinned against you. Lord, forgive us for judging others. Forgive us for thinking more highly of ourselves than we are. Humble us, Lord God. And Lord God, help us to acknowledge you as God. There's no other God but you. And Lord, bless this ministry. Bless this ministry. We pray that you'll reach out, stretch out your mighty hand today and save, heal, and deliver. Those who are online, live, bless them, Lord. Those who will get the video later, bless them, Lord. And we praise you and help us to be true to this gospel calling. Help us to be true to what you call us to do. Lord, every one of us has sinned and come short of your glory. But we ask that you have mercy on us, God. Put us back on track. Put us back on track. Lord, help the backslider to get back on track. Help those who have turned their backs on you to repent and get back on track. And Lord, we pray for the sick and shut-ins, those whose bodies have been bruised and, 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 and mutilated by Satan. Lord, heal and deliver. Lord, you said signs and wonders shall accompany your word. And so we thank you, Father, and we honor you. We give room to you. We give way to you, Holy Spirit, and we bless you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Bless each and every one. Reward them, Lord for being in this fellowship today as we enter into your presence and as we bless you and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, let the church say amen. Let the chat window acknowledge by saying amen, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Turn with me now or download on your smartphone uh, the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, we're going to look at uh, a few verses from the book of Nehemiah. We're going to uh, maybe fast forward to a few chapters, and we're going to look at Nehemiah. We bless God. We thank God. Nehemiah was the last book that was officially recorded in the Old Testament. And chronologically, ladies and gentlemen, Nehemiah is the last official recording of the Old Testament. We know that Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament, but Nehemiah wrote his prophecy after Malachi. We ask if you would please mute your phone so that I, we have a smooth uh, recording today. Thank you. Mute your phone, and then at the end of the service, we'll give you an opportunity to unmute your phone. So we're asking everybody now to please mute your phone. Thank you very much. Nehemiah. At, at the end of Nehemiah, ladies and gentlemen, Old Testament history closes around 450 BC. And then uh, after Nehemiah, there's uh, a great revival takes place because of the faith of Nehemiah and God's faithfulness and the obedience of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, if we in America and if we in the nations will pay heed to what God did in this uh, time during the life of this prophet and apply it to our lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we can prevent disaster in America. We can, we can guarantee that our posterity, our children's children, our children's children's children and future uh, uh, generations will have a place of freedom and worship. But if we don't pay heed to what God has said in this word, and especially in the book of Nehemiah, if we don't pay heed, then we are at loss, ladies and gentlemen. We are losers. So we don't want to lose for ourselves or our posterity. Nehemiah uh, said in uh, verse one, I was in Shushan, the palace. Nehemiah was a captive in Babylon. 
Now, the Jews were in Babylon. They were captured because of their sins. Ladies and gentlemen, God kept sending prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet warning Israel that if they did not repent, he would destroy them. But ladies and gentlemen, nobody believed God. They didn't believe God. They stoned the prophets. They killed the prophets. They took the prophet Isaiah and they stuffed him into a hollowed out tree log and they sawed the log in half and they sawed Isaiah in half. Ladies and gentlemen, they killed the prophet Jeremiah in Egypt. Uh, uh, after the, the captivity to Babylon, the, the remain, some of the remaining Jews said, we're going to Egypt. And they forced Jeremiah to go with them. And they killed Jeremiah in, in Egypt. And ladies and gentlemen, we look at the prophets, how they were stoned. And you, we read this in the book of Hebrews. They stoned them. They burned them with fire. They stuffed them in, in animal skins and sick the dogs on them. They mistreated God's preachers. And ladies and gentlemen, they are mistreating God's preachers in America today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, leave Joel Osteen alone. He's a brother. He loves the Lord. He may not, may not preach what you want to preach, but you didn't call him. God called him to preach. You didn't call him. You don't have a heaven to put him in. Some of you preachers ought to stop being so puffed up. Some of you so-called Christians ought to stop being so proud and puffed up. Uh, just because you have a theology doesn't mean that everybody has to follow your theology. What is my theology? Pastor Leroy Carter follows the Bible, the word of God, the logos, the full gospel from Genesis to Revelation. That is my theology. And that's what I'm going to preach. And I don't care if you don't like it. You don't have to support this ministry. Uh, God's going to supply anyway. And we thank God. But I'm going to be true to God. God called me and picked me up out of sin and out of a, a filthy life. I was a sinner, a wretch undone, filthy. I couldn't even stand myself. And God uh, uh, cleansed me, uh, cleansed my body, cleansed my mind, cleansed my spirit, delivered me from sin and shame and called me to preach the gospel. And so I qualify to preach the gospel. How do I qualify? Because I have been called by the Lord. Oh, you're just making that up. Oh, that's all in your imagination. Oh, no, no. Al contraire. God spoke to me in a plain voice. He made himself vivid. He made himself real. And, and, and I've been running for Jesus ever since. And I won't turn back. I'm tempted every day, just like you are. Satan tempts me every day, but I refuse to turn back. I refuse to compromise and I refuse to bash another Christian. I refuse to judge another Christian just because John Smith doesn't preach what I preach or doesn't preach like I preach or doesn't have the same objectives, uh, the same missionary goals that I have. I'm not going to condemn him. I'm not going to condemn her. We are all part of the body of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the human body, the head can't say to the arms, I don't need you. The arms can't say to the legs, I don't need you. The feet can't say to the toes, I don't need you. The eyeballs can't say to the throat, I don't need you. We're all part of the body. God has fitly joined us together. And so because someone is preaching this and someone is preaching that, or, or, or this ministry preach, uh, focuses on salvation, this ministry focuses on deliverance, this ministry focuses on speaking in tongues, this ministry focuses on casting out demons. We all ought to respect the body of Christ. And as we respect the body of Christ, we respect Jesus. Well, let's get back to uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah said, I was in Shushan, the palace, and my brother Hanani came to me. Verse 2, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. Uh, Nehemiah asked Hanani, his brother, and the visiting Jews. And these were members of the second deportation from Babylon. There were uh, two groups of Jews who had left Babylon before Nehemiah was commissioned to go to build the walls of Jerusalem. 
And that first group was led by Zerubbabel. The second group was led by Ezra. And now uh, we see Nehemiah getting ready, getting ready to uh, lead a third group out of Babylon. Okay. And so his heart is touched by what he hears from his brother. His brother tells him uh, that the walls of Jerusalem are torn down. The people are being invaded. They're being destroyed. Women are being raped. Children are being mutilated. There are no walls of protection around the, the, the city of Babylon. And the neighboring tribes and neighboring nations are just are wreaking havoc in, in Jerusalem. I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad, and I'm so proud of our president uh, for making two trips to Houston, Texas in the last week. And no matter what you think about the president, uh, we must give him kudos for showing interest, love, and concern about the uh, flood victims in Houston. And I find it rather ironic that a man who ran for office and said, we're going to build a wall to keep the Mexicans out. Now he's in Houston, Texas, embracing Mexicans and uh, Hispanics and blacks and whites, all flood victims. And no matter what their color is, what their race is, he's embracing them, hugging them, picking up little children and, and getting a sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, to humanity. Amen. And, and I believe that after all this is over, uh, he will not any longer want to build a wall to keep people out, but he will want to help build this wall to help preserve America from sin and from Satan's onslaught. And so we just bless God and praise God and we pray for our president that that the walls he intended to build uh, some time ago, that he's going to get a new revelation of the kind of wall God wants built around America and around your nation. God wants to build up Zion's walls. God wants to build up spiritual walls to keep the devil out. Those are the walls that are necessary. And so we look at Nehemiah, and Nehemiah had a, an urgency to go to Jerusalem and build up the walls to prevent the warring tribes from attacking the people and destroying them. And Nehemiah was the cupbearer the cupbearer for the king. He had a very favorable position. And so the king noticed his countenance and the king asked him what was going on. And Nehemiah said to the king, after fasting and praying, he said, uh, my people are being destroyed in Jerusalem. They have no walls to protect them. The walls are torn down. The gates to the city are torn down and there's no one to protect them. And so the king said, what do you want me to do? And Nehemiah fasted and prayed. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you need to fast and pray before you get on Facebook. Some of you need to fast and pray before you make these YouTube videos. Some of you need to fast and pray before you get on your cell phone. Some of you need to fast and pray before you pick up your phone. Some of you need to fast and pray before you open your mouths. Because God said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of our mouths. God wants us to uh, live in holiness. He wants rivers of living water to flow out of our bellies. He wants us to be a blessing to people. He wants us to edify people, not tear them down. Uh, uh, why try to tear down Joel Osteen? Uh, Joel does a great work. Uh, just because he didn't jump on the bandwagon right away, uh, he's got a reason for doing what he, he, he didn't do. Uh, uh, what, he's got a reason for doing what he did do or what he didn't do. So you give God the praise. You give God the glory and, and, and let God, let God minister to you and show you what to do, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. And so, Father, we just thank you for, for, for what you're doing. Continue in the word. The king gave Nehemiah the favor and letters of transit and letters of uh, to take the gospel, take the gospel, uh, uh, take the, the help needed to Jerusalem. And so when Nehemiah got there, he saw how the walls had been torn down. He didn't tell the leaders what he was about to do. He didn't tell the leaders what was on his mind. And in chapter two, we see that he surveyed the city. Look at um, 
verse 11 in chapter 2 of Nehemiah. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. And I rose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when you cannot tell people what God has put on your heart. You can't tell people what God has given you to do. You can't tweet uh, what God has given you to all people. You can't put your plans out there because people will mess up your plans. See, there are people who, who they're controlling spirits. There are people who don't want you to be successful. There are people who want to uh, tell you to do things their way. Ladies and gentlemen, when God gives you a vision, when God gives you a plan, you need to do what Nehemiah did. You need to pray, be silent, seek the Lord, wait on the Lord. God will tell you when to put your plan into effect. God knows, says, I know the plans that I have for you. And God has his timing about everything he wants done. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to wait on the Lord and, and, and don't let everybody push you. Don't let anybody push you to do something that you're not ready to do. Don't let anybody change the plans that God has given to you. Be faithful to God. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, pray in tongues over that thing. Pray in the spirit. Wait on the Lord. Stay in the prayer room. Stay in the prayer. Get out of the chat room and get in the prayer room and wait on the Lord. And then God will show you when to do it and God will show you what to do. That's the way he is. That's the mighty God that we serve. Praise God. And so Nehemiah didn't tell anybody what he was to do. His heart was heavy, ladies and gentlemen. And I pray that God will burden your heart with a burden for America, with a burden for your nation, with a burden for uh, uh, people's souls, that, that you will be restless, that you will be, you'll, you'll, you'll have a great concern for those whose souls are in jeopardy, uh, that you will have a burden for people regardless of their skin color, their race, their ethnicity, their financial uh, 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 situation that you'll have a burden for, for humankind, that you'll have a burden for people regardless of their politics, whether they're liberal or conservative, a Democrat or Republican, but that you'll have a burden for people, ladies and gentlemen, because souls are at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, souls are at stake. The souls of the American people, as well as the people of the world, are at stake. Look at the big picture, ladies and gentlemen. Come out of your uh, 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 tunnel vision and look at the big picture. Satan is out to destroy the whole world. He wants America to go to war with Korea, North Korea. He wants America to be at odds with Russia. He wants uh, a confrontation with China. Ladies and gentlemen, you must pray for your soul. You must pray for other people. You must pray for your president. Your president has a burden on his heart. You must pray that he will do things according to God's will. You must pray every time you bash him and talk about him and, and, and uh, 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 put him down, you are hurting him. You're hurting the cause. Every time you talk about another preacher or another believer, you are hurting the cause of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we need to be like Nehemiah. Just be quiet. Be still and know that I'm God, God said. Wait on the Lord. 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Well, to make a long story short, ladies and gentlemen, to make a long story short, Nehemiah spoke to the leaders in Jerusalem. They were people who had come out of captivity before Nehemiah came there. The king had uh, appointed Nehemiah to be the governor. And Nehemiah spoke to the leaders. Verse 17 of chapter 2 in Nehemiah. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in? How Jerusalem lieth waste. And the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very critical verse in this book. Then said I unto them, you see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. I believe that the President of the United States, after his second trip to Houston, and I commend him, giving kudos and a shout out to him for going and, 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 and touching the hearts of people and being touched by the hearts of people, all different races in Houston, Texas, and getting an affinity for the heart of the American people I believe that he's going to return to Washington and say to his leaders, you see the distress we're in. You see how uh, Houston and the United States is lying at waste. The walls have been burned with fire. The gates have been destroyed. And, and we're being destroyed from, from, from a, by a powerful enemy. And I believe the, the, the president's going to change his whole attitude towards building a wall. I don't believe he's going to want to build a physical wall to keep the Mexicans out or anybody else out. But I believe he's going to call upon the name of Jesus Christ and say, Lord, build a wall of protection around the people. For our enemy is not the Mexicans or immigrants. Our enemy is not ISIS or terrorists. Our enemy is Satan. Lord, help the people to build a wall of protection around themselves. And how can we do this, ladies and gentlemen? How can we do this? Ladies and gentlemen, we can build a wall around our families, around our communities, around our nations, around our churches. We can build a wall, ladies and gentlemen. Stop the fighting. Stop the finger pointing. Stop the blaming. Repent. First of all, the first thing to do, and this is you and me and everybody, repent. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've talked about people when we should have been quiet. We've put people down. We have judged people. We have chosen sides. Uh, we, uh, we've uh, become more politically oriented uh, uh, than, than we ought to be. Uh, uh, we've been following uh, polit politicians and leaders who are ungodly people. And we have pledged allegiance to them. We've turned our backs to God. We've shut God out of our churches. Some preachers don't even open their Bibles anymore. We've shut God out of the schools. We've shut God out of the job. We've turned our backs on God. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why the walls protecting America are torn down. It is, listen, ladies and gentlemen, wake up, church. Wake up, believer. It is only because of God's mercy that we are not consumed. Read Lamentations chapter 3 and see how Isaiah is an eyewitness of the devastation. I'm, I'm sorry, see how Jeremiah is a witness of the devastation of Jerusalem. He saw the first hand destruction of Nebuchadnezzar's army marching through Jerusalem. And he said, God, it's because of your mercies that we are not consumed. Ladies and gentlemen, when you take a good look at America and the nations and most nations pattern themselves after America. Ladies and gentlemen, many of the churches I visited in other countries, they pattern themselves after the American church. 
And if the American church is not right, what do you think the world is, is going? Ladies and gentlemen, we need not allow any bitterness and any divisiveness, divisiveness and any strife and finger pointing and blaming preachers and naming preachers and, and nailing preachers and 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 and, and, and uh, wanting a president to be assassinated. We've got church folk, folks saying assassinate the president. Y'all need to just shut up and repent and ask God to have mercy because what you're doing, you're feeding into Satan's divisiveness. And Satan has, ladies and gentlemen, listen, the devil has unleashed and commissioned powerful demonic spirits. You ought to get my book, The Giants Are Back. Read my book, The Giants Are Back. Satan has released powerful demonic spirits against America, against the nations. Why? To take them down, to divide the church, to have the church arguing with, with one another, to get the church not on one accord, to separate people one from, from another, to cause people to turn their backs against God. The devil has released, ladies and gentlemen, powers and principalities, demonic spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, ruler spirits to destroy the nation, to destroy you, to destroy the church. And the sad thing about it is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is letting it happen. We're so busy raising money so busy having our little dinners, so busy playing bingo, so busy having our fashion shows, so busy uh, dressing up in our big hats and our fine looking clothes, and so busy trying to keep up with, keep, keep up with the Joneses that we are missing it. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to repent. We need to call upon the name of the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, we need to say like Nehemiah said, you see, the condition we're in, you see the distress we're in, let us rise up and build the walls of protection. Let us rise up and build. Ladies and gentlemen, it took Nehemiah to go there, to travel 800 miles, representing a foreign government, a government that had taken over Israel and destroyed Israel. God gave favor to Nehemiah, the king's cupbearer, and sent Nehemiah there back to Jerusalem as a governor to help Jerusalem to rebuild. And Nehemiah had to preach to the people. He had to chastise the people. We are in this state because of the sins of our fathers, the sins of our previous leaders, and because of our own sins. Nehemiah told it like he should have. He was not afraid. He said, we're in this condition because of our sins. You see the distress we're in. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray that all America will wake up. I pray that you will wake up. I pray that all your eyes will be open, not only in this country, but in every nation. You see the distress we're in. Why is the world what it is, what it is? Because of sin, ladies and gentlemen. Sin. God hates sin. God will have to judge the world. God will have to judge the nation. He will have to judge the church and he will have to judge you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, none of us will escape unless we repent. None of us will escape unless we repent. Stop being so proud and so stubborn that you cannot repent of your sin. Repent. Tell God, God, I'm sorry. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Father. And call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, uh, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise up together. Blacks, whites, Republicans, Democrats, Hispanics, uh, Asians, all mankind. Let us rise up together in the name of Jesus, not in the name of Allah. Allah can't save this nation. Followers of Allah will be destroyed unless they repent. Buddha can't save this nation. 
You can chant until the sky turns green. Buddha can't save this nation. You must be born again. You must be born. You must receive Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, ladies and gentlemen, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. It doesn't matter what kind of degree you have, what college you went to, how much money you have, what kind of job you have. It doesn't matter what your political position is. If you're not born again, you will be destroyed. But this ministry, this message today gives us hope. We have hope in Christ Jesus that if you will call upon the name of the Lord, if you will ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and ask him to come into your life and be your Savior and Lord, you will be saved today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're looking long range also. If we don't repent now, listen carefully. If we don't repent now, if we don't change our ways right now, if we don't humble ourselves and turn to God, ladies and gentlemen, it may be that your great-grandchildren and mine and great-great-grandchildren might have to be released from slavery in another land to come back and rebuild America. Ladies and gentlemen, we're so close to a civil war in this nation, it's pathetic. We're so cl close to an invasion from a foreign army, air force, and navy, it's pathetic. Wake up, people, wake up. Why are we in this situation? Because we have kicked God out of this nation. We don't even want him. We don't even believe in him. We don't reverence him. We don't even accept the Bible as truth. But ladies and gentlemen, I plead with you. I beg you with all that is in me. Repent of your sins. Get saved today. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Turn from sin. Turn from evil. Repent. Turn away from all sin and call upon the name of the Lord. And God said to me the other day, son, preach this word. Preach this word. Tell them. Tell them. A terrible storm is coming to America. God said that just this two days ago, tell them a terrible storm is coming to America. Even greater than Hurricane Harvey. Greater than Katrina. It is not a weather storm, son. Tell them it is not a weather storm. Tell them great devastation is heading to America. <coughs> Tell them I cannot hold it back. Why? Because they have sinned against me. They don't want me in. They don't want me in charge. They've turned their backs to me. And so I have released a terrible, listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen. God said, I have released a terrible storm. I have assigned it to destroy America. There's no, he said, I cannot repent of it. I won't turn back from it unless America repent. Tell the people it's with urgency that they need to repent of their sins. Everyone needs to repent and call upon the name of Jesus. God said, if my people, and this is especially talking to the church, the church where there's so much bitterness and anger and finger pointing and name blaming and, and, and kicking God to the curb. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from my their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal the land. Ladies and gentlemen, this message is urgent. Share it with others. Share it with us. Be obedient. Confess your sins today. Receive the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to be destroyed. This nation does not have to be destroyed. If we don't repent, God said he will permit an invader to invade this nation. 
and destroyed. God said millions will be destroyed. Millions, ladies and gentlemen, will be destroyed if we don't repent. And ladies and gentlemen, if we don't rise up now and build spiritual walls in the name of Jesus Christ, it may be that our great grandchildren, great, great grandchildren will look back and say, they did us a great injustice by turning away from the living God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I pray that this message will bless you. This message will change your life, will revolutionize you. I pray that none of you will sleep until you repent of your sins. I pray that you'll seek the Lord Jesus Christ and that he'll give you peace. I pray that you'll pray for your household, your neighbors, your church, your government, the community. I pray that you pray for the president and the leadership of this nation. And I pray that we all will turn to God, turn to God. I pray that we will all turn to God and be saved and be saved. Praise God. Father God, we thank you and bless you and praise you and honor you. I preach what you've given me today, Lord, and I trust you, Holy Spirit, to do a mighty work in the hearts of the people. Save, stre stretch forth your mighty hand and save and deliver today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, before we close out, I want, I want to uh, invite those of you who are not yet saved to get saved. To get saved. Ask Jesus Christ into your heart. Give him your life. Repent of your sins. And he will save you today and add you to the true church. Your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life, sealed, written in the blood of Jesus, sealed by the Holy Spirit. And nothing, nobody can erase your name. And then let us tell others about Jesus. And the only way to be saved is through Jesus Christ. Not by becoming a Republican or a Democrat, not by having the money or a job, not by joining First Baptist, not by your church membership, not by baptism, but you must be born again. Get born again. Give your life to Jesus. By the way, we ask that you uh, um, tithe. We, we encourage you to tithe into this ministry or tithe into a church where uh, your funds are going to be put to use for the kingdom of God. Tithing is giving unto God in an area where God can help people. And um, we encourage, uh, encourage, we want to encourage you to tithe into this ministry. Uh, we encourage that you send an offering, send a monthly offering to Back to Basics Ministries, Post Office Box 907, Pine Lake, Georgia, 30072. Or give me a, a, a call, 404-205-1101. Or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. Your offering will be used to help bless this ministry. Help us to pay our bills. Help us to pay our internet bills. Help us to pay for the software we're using to live stream to, to Facebook and throughout the world. Help us to uh, share the gospel uh, to other nations. Help us as we support ministries all over the world and tithe into those ministries. Help us as we uh, help um, uh, put food on the tables of people in Africa and Jamaica and other nations. We praise you, we thank you. Or you can send your uh, monthly, monthly offering to PayPal. Just log on to PayPal and send your money to Back to Basics Ministries via my email address. Use my email address, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com. And we will be good stewards of what you sent. We want to thank God for a precious brother and sister, husband and wife, who uh, tied $300 into this ministry just this past week. We thank you for all of your blessings, your giving, and we thank God for you. By the way, uh, we're going to be ordaining Linda Blankenship Barrett on Back to Basics Online Church on October uh, the first Sunday in October, on October 1st, ladies and gentlemen, put this on your calendar. We're going to ordain 
Linda Barrett, Linda Blankenship Barrett, to the gospel ministry. And um, we praise God for that. We praise God for that. Pray for Linda. God's got work for her, and she will be ordained. So we thank God. Well, we're going to stop our recording, but we're going to keep the chat window open. And um, we're going to ask uh, those of you who want to open your phones um, in the next 30 seconds, open your phone.